Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Silvia Giaggio, a physical therapist from the University of Bologna, Italy, and it's a great honor to take part at this event. And I have no disclosure. Pelvic organ prolapse is described as the descent of one or more of the anterior, posterior vaginal wall, the uterus, or the apex of the vagina. And it may be associated also with the per subjective perception of falling, slipping, or downward displacement of a part of an organ. For the clinical management of non-recurrent or non-complex pelvic organ prolapse, guidelines recommended observation, lifestyle intervention, the use of passive, in some cases surgery, and pelvic floor muscle training, which is an intervention that consists of a series of exercises to improve pelvic floor muscle strength, endurance, power, relaxation, or a combination of these parameters. In particular, some evidence suggests that pelvic floor muscle training has a potential positive effect for prolapse symptoms. But if an effective treatment, in this case, the pelvic floor muscle training was not well and fully described in a trial, how could the transferability, reproducibility and comparability be ensured? So, in this framework, the objective of our systematic review was to assess the completeness of exercise reporting in randomized controlled trial on pelvic floor muscle training for women with pelvic organ prolapse. We registered the protocol in Prospero and for the reporting, the PRISMA guidelines was used. Concerning the material and method, we search Medline, Cochrane Central, Sinal, Scopus, and Pedro, Gray Literature, and the reference list of included studies up to October 2020. We included all English published RCT in which women with any stage and type of pelvic organ prolapse underwent a pelvic floor muscle training program combined and or compared with any type of intervention. Secondary analysis or follow-up of the original article already included was excluded. Concerning the data extraction and assessment, the completeness of intervention was evaluated by two independent training reviewers with two tools, the TIDR, the reporting uh, guideline for non-pharmacological intervention, and the SEP, the specific reporting guideline for exercise. Each item was marked with one if it was uh, completely and fully reported by authors, incomplete or missing items with zero, and non-applicable items with an A. The total score and the individual item score from the TIDR and the SART were analyzed descriptively and inter-rate agreement was also calculated. In this slide we can see the flow diagram. After the selection process, 26 RCTs met criteria for inclusion. Regarding the TIDR, the figure represented the completeness of each included RCTs. As we can see in the summary figure, the 57.1% of the 12 TIDR items was adequately reported with a mean score of 6.8. The greatest adherence reached the 33.3%. The most frequently described items were item number one, about the name of intervention, and item four, procedure. On the contrary, item 9, tailoring, and 10, modification, were the least frequently reported ones. We did the same analysis and representation for the set. The mean score of the completely reported item was 6.7 out of 19, ranging from 0 to 12, representing the 45.3%. None of the analyzed trial provided a tele-description of pelvic floor muscle training as required by the CERT. Item 14A and item 40B were the most and the least frequently reported one, respectively. Analyzing item 13 data in about the dosage of the exercises, the adherence was less than 50%. Descriptors regarding pelvic floor muscle training providers, item 2, were also largely missing. 
The major limitation of these studies concerned the eligibility criteria. We included only English RCTs. On the other hand, two blind trained authors evaluated each article with two reporting tools. And we also checked and searched for any supplementary file, such as protocols or appendixes. Describing exercise-based and complex intervention is challenging. Anyway, if the goal of the clinical research is to provide evidence-based and reliable intervention, detailed descriptors are necessary. Although different tools have been developed, the completeness of pelvic floor muscle training reporting for women with pelvic organ prolapse is still below desirable standards. Frequent shortcomings were information regarding providers, tailoring, modification of exercises and the adherence. On the other hand, we have several possibilities to improve research at different levels. Researchers should apply the existing intervention reporting tools, and peer reviewers and journal editors should check the relative adherence. I thank the research team for this collaboration. And finally, here yeah, there are my contacts, my email address, my Instagram and Twitter account. Thank you again for the attention and for this opportunity. Thank you.